ever seen it. But if you look at the list of accomplishments, you can say Washington right up to Obama, they just get progressively more aesthetic <laughs> as you go on. Like, I actually made a list, like if we go to the next slide, like here, I don't know if you know all these guys. Uh, well, here we'll be going through this. Jefferson. Yeah, well, Old Jefferson, yes, Hans. probably the most. Kruger. Kruger, yes. The party. No, this is Taylor. That's Zachary Taylor. Taylor in the middle, yes. And then before the camera. Old white man. Before. Basically, yeah. Um, My favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. There's actually a phase in the middle where they all, all had beards. One of them got rid of the beard and everyone else. I don't think it was a phase in the middle. I think it was the first 150 years. It's a mutton chop phase. No, it, 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 there was an evolution. It was a, yeah. stir, it was a steady, the mutton chop one was a big one. Oh, yeah. It's, it's actually interesting. Two of the guys went fully with them and then they, they would no longer see again. I think about that actually. I wonder who the first president of the official here was. The probably. Probably. Woodrow Wilson. No, I was, I was actually. Yeah, Justin's pretty clean. Justin's pretty clean. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Maybe, maybe yeah. a young. George Washington didn't have hair. No, that's that's true. George Washington didn't have hair. Yeah, that's true. 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 Yeah, that's Oh, like if, if you were to put up, if you were to see a spectrum of say all the rulers of Russia, SARS included, presidents and SARS from like today, say I think back to the mid 1800s or something, mm. you'll see they alternate. One is hair, the other one is bald. <laughs> one is hair, the other is bald. One is hair, and it goes on like that. And you can see, and it, well, it's not so much that you have to, but it's become kind of a hallmark of the way they do things. Because <laughs> 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 there's well, I mean, let's face it. I mean, with a country that's not so much instability, that these are one of the few. Is it proportional then? Like, was it the guy before Putin extraordinarily hairy? <laughs> well, that was Yeltsin. Men, what men did that? What did he look like? Well, I mean, was he, he was, extraordinarily hairy? He was pretty clean cut. I don't know what he looked like without his shirt on. But, wow. I mean, no, no, he, he was rough. Was rough. Was well, yeah, that's true. So you're saying that like the, this is to bring the bald and hairy people of Russia together is to have this? No, no, I think I am. I, I don't like know. Central 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 Union here. Yeah, I don't know when it starts. I mean, I I would guess because I know it goes back at least as far as Nicholas II, and I think his father was was bald. Because it was, I, I can't remember the exact time it starts, and so I don't know why specifically it started. This sounds like a message that like CNN would be used to forecast Russia's next leader. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, this I, one is the only candidate with hair. It must be him. Well, you know, at this rate, it just it might as well be. I mean, well, I mean, for anybody who followed the last one, that's basically what happened. Uh, but anyway, speaking of the people we just have up here, um, Thomas Jefferson, if you knew or not, actually can speak six languages. And James A. Garfield, who was right next to him, was could write in two. Yes, he was assassinated, but he could write in two different languages at the same time. Wait, so same time. At the same time. So is he the inspiration for the kind of bad catalogs of lasagna? I was going to say, is one of those languages lasagna? <laughs> <laughs> or not as a language. I Caspi. Maybe. Just the one language is just It's hard to just thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think he was around long enough to really have an impact on that sense. Oh, also, the guy in the top left, he memorized his entire inauguration speech, which was 3,319 words. So that's the equivalent of memorizing an inquiry, an inquiry paper and then delivering it orally. And then you get to say Richard Nixon, whose highlight of his career was advising him. <laughs> and I think George W. Bush. Well, that, I think that's a little bit unfair. Not that. Well, no, well, I'm just saying it's high was just getting advising. Okay, well, let me put it this way. In positive. Like, these guys you, take the 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 you take it. Sorry. I don't think a lot of these guys have the like Tyler in the middle there. What do you mean the opportunity? Like, the opportunity to advise the Miami Dolphins on a play. Sure, sure. Now they would have jumped on the opportunity. They would have loved it. I, I, I Look at him. Yeah. Also, was the goal in that photo to look as upset as possible? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, the photographer said. It's like, like, it's it's like not it's like it's just like upset. Put on the zoo. Well, I mean, as it turns out, he actually died about 50 days into his reign as president. Mm -hmm. Exactly. His reign. So, <laughs> well, what, yeah, why not? So, I mean, it could well be that he was dying in that photo. Yeah, Anyway, why don't we move to the next question?
Actually, on a similar one, unless you guys have anything else to say about American presidents, let me close off with this. Do you know who the first president to be born in a hospital was? Do you have any guesses? In a hospital? Yeah, in a hospital. Woodrow Wilson. Anybody else? That's an interesting guess. Teddy Roosevelt. That's another interesting. Both around the same time, so it's interesting. It's actually. Jimmy Carter. Where are all the other ones? Born in a bath. With marbles. <laughs> Hotels. Parties. Hotels. Lincoln was born in a log cabin. Wait, so we got, like, when, yeah. when was Carter? Yes, that's true. Yeah. When was Carter born? Uh, 19, well, he'll be 89 this year. So 1924. So, like, yeah. they're, I don't know how, babies have been being born in hospitals for a long time, right? Well, that's, that's exactly. So that's really weird that. That's exactly the point. And I mean, you think at the same time, because another thing about American presidents you might not know is that, uh, well, the most recent president to die was Gerald Ford, who was 91. And when he died, he became only the fourth president in history to, to hit 90 years of age. And then one of the other four was Ronald Reagan, who died you know, just a couple years before him. Well, like, if you look so, at the like, pictures of Obama now compared to four years ago, or like Bush, like before and after his eight years, or like, they age so much because it's such a stressful job. Well, see, well, actually, you know, it's funny you mention that because I have friends in Wisconsin who are like ardent Democrats. And right after Ronald Reagan died, maybe you guys, I don't know if you remember, but they had this whole, you know, <laughs> week for, you know, Ronald Reagan, all this nonsense and all his shots and his glamour photos. And I was talking to my friends about this and they said, it's really no wonder because they had a photo of Ronald Reagan and all the Republican presidents that were still alive that came before and after him. And they said that this was the first time in history that there so many ex-presidents who were still alive once. And they, and they said, well, it's really no wonder, because when you look at how terrible a job they did at running the country, like, I mean, <laughs> these people will live in to be 120, because they just, they incur no, like, I mean, Ronald Reagan, like, what did he do, really? So, I mean, is it any wonder that he did 90? I mean, that, that was the <laughs> so best. you're saying, like, the mark of a good president is dying early. <laughs> that Garfield guy was like, the best. <laughs> well, <laughs> really hard. Well, I mean, I think there's a bit of a threshold you have to reach because, I mean, you have to actually, people have to know who you are. I mean, when you're in office. The United States. <laughs> Die out and be known. Well, but, no, but think about it at the same time, though. I mean, the United States has had four presidents assassinated in its history. I'd say at least two of them rank in the top five presidents. Yeah. Sure. So when you when you think about that, I mean, maybe there is some truth to it. So I guess like to be a good president, you need to piss off some people for you. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah. that also means theoretically, if, well, no, I stress theoretically, if you piss somebody <laughs> off really bad, to use your language, then you've also made somebody else really happy. So that's so you would be one of the people that I'm assuming the like that the presidents who got assassinated would make really happy. But a Republican, in the same light, would say those were the two worst presidents or something like that. Oh, yeah, well, see, you know, so that's the thing. I mean, if you, go, if you go to the, no, I don't think so. If you go to the South today, I mean, they still say, my God, you know, we hate Lincoln Wising on the Fox. Like, I, I was surprised people from Atlanta still have an issue that they bring Lincoln on the Fox. I think it's ridiculous. Oh. But I mean, you know, I that's know. that's if, like if that's their main issue with Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I don't know if it's the <laughs> <that's laughs> <that's laughs> main issue. We've made progress. We're talking about the, the policies. Everything he did in this term was fine. Why is he on the five? Yeah. Well, all all valid points. You know, why don't we move to the next question? I think we've probably had that sure. for a little while. So why don't we tell me what was Ford's biggest failure of all? Is this Gerald? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Or yeah, yeah, well, I phrased it that way deliberately, but since you asked, car company. Okay. Uh, biggest failure. Would you say? Is it the person? Well, that's, 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 that's for you to tell me. Oh, okay. Um, that's Ford's biggest failure. Biggest failure. Mm -hmm. Is that the biggest success? Because <laughs> I have an answer for that. I would love to hear it. That was easy. Okay. <laughs> that was sort of buzzing in. No, no, no. Go for it. Um, the fact that the name Ford lends itself nicely to a line in a Kanye West song that says, uh, I couldn't afford a Ford Escort. I remember I couldn't afford a Ford Escort. What song? Some diamonds from Sierra Leone. It's that's strange. If that was the only thing they did, never made a single car, still be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what the heck does that have to do with diamonds and Sierra Leone? 
Um, <laughs> are, are we really have this discussion? This is just a problem. I thought they go from to. in rock. You can go from diamonds in a you know like in an Af in a, in a small African country to to not be able to afford a substandard automobile. <laughs> There's their biggest failure. <laughs> the Ford Escort. You know what? I might have that here actually. Is the Ford Escort? Yeah. Exactly. You don't know what it is because it was so bad. Bad. It's like a Ford Escort. No, that's the same. Oh, that one. I can't. No, I, I'm not saying that's the biggest failure. Oh, okay. I just well, said that that's a card. I'll let it slide this one time because as it turns out, I confused these cards. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay, well, why don't, why don't I just move on? So what is what is what is the answer? Okay, well, I, maybe some of you have heard of this, but maybe not. Uh, 1920s, uh, Henry Ford tried to build a village in Brazil. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it was called, of all things, Fortlandia. Because it's known in Portuguese as Fortlandia. The idea being that, I mean, this was supposed to be his rubber supply for the cars. So like, when the market was first taking off in the 1920s. So, the Brazilian government granted him a huge tract of land. There you go. Right in there, it's uh, just about um, near the city of Santarém, Brazil. So this is really in the heart of the Amazon. And I mean, this was supposed to be full out rubber plantation. Now, uh, the reason it failed is because it was never ever operational for a variety of reasons, uh, all of which could have been avoided, but for uh, again various reasons were not. So uh, based on the source I have here, uh, obviously Henry Ford being. Despite the fact that he was very progressive, didn't like paying any more money than he had to. So, in wanting to break the supply and the uh, dependency of the United States cars on British rubber, which at the time was grown in Indonesia, he bought this tract of land. But it was hilly and rocky and infertile, so just generally not good for the rubber trees. They didn't have off road model T at that point. Not at that point, no. I actually do have a photo of that coming up. Uh, none of Ford's managers had any requisite knowledge of the tropical agriculture that was there. Uh, the rubber trees were packed very closely together in the plantations instead of being spread apart, which is how they're supposed to be grown uh, naturally, because when they're close together, they become easy prey for all kinds of insects. So, I mean, the trees became infected, uh, overrun by, I think, ants and bugs and spiders, caterpillars, basically just destroyed the whole crop within very little time, none of which actually existed in Indonesia, because, well, the Amazon really was totally untouched at this point. Uh, and all indigenous workers were hired to perhaps unsurprisingly, uh, but they were forced to live, and I think, yeah, we have some photos here, so there you go, top left. Those were the indigenous homes that they were made to live in, all American-style homes, and they were also given American-style food, so hamburgers, stuff they, they never had before, which uh, they had to wear ID badges all the time and work all day under the sun, which as you can imagine was, uh, was quite hard. And something I'd love to know how, how this one is, but uh, Ford also forbade alcohol, women, and tobacco in the town, not just within the town, but inside the workers' own homes. Uh, now, the inhabitants eventually got around this by paddling out to an island on the river uh, Tapapos. It was actually called the Island of Innocence, and they established a series of bars in the office. Concentrated den of alcohol. Pretty high. It's like, a, it's like a, the Amazonian Vegas. Uh, and then that stayed there, and then eventually there was... What goes on on Innocent, innocent Silent Stage? <laughs> yeah. Is that still in effect? Is it still there? If no, 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 well, actually, still. no, well, I mean, the island itself is there, but I mean, not all of this has been destroyed, because, I mean, the workers eventually rose up in protest, the army had to be called in to suppress it, uh, you know, the rubber crop had been completely destroyed, but uh, Ford did try to relocate further south of that, and develop more money, the Great Depression hit, all these problems, so eventually I think it was one of his grandsons, Yes, his grandson Henry Ford II sold it for a loss of over twenty million dollars. They just they, they tired us. So yeah. <laughs> 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 they just, yeah, that's, uh, yeah good. See, but there you they go. The off-road nineteen forty-four. Yeah. <laughs> well, quite literally off-road. Well, yeah. Uh, anyway, but well, yeah, this is this is what it looks like today in Fort So none of these buildings are obviously operational. In fact, they, they were never even filled with equipment. So now they're just sitting there, really decaying. Yeah. 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 Well, Brazil has actually known quite a few of these stories, which actually leads us into the next question, which is not totally dissimilar to what we were just talking about, about this isolated case. So, so tell me what futuristic city was heavily influenced by Marxist principles? The design. 
I heard about one in, uh, they tried 